Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and we are back with more notable people of African American history that you should probably know beyond MLK and Malcolm X. Today we're working on looking at Ida B. Wells. Uh, she was actually born in Holly Springs, Mississippi, July 16th, 1862. So she was born while the Civil War was still going on. She would pass away on March the 25th, 1931 in Chicago, Illinois. So, uh, she is perhaps most known as an anti-lynching journalist in the U.S. in the 1890s. Um, in fact, I have a book, a book here that covers some of her writings. So yeah, it's not a very big one. We might read this at some point. But yeah, um, anti-lynching campaign 1892 to 1900. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see, she, uh, was born into slavery, because like we said, she was born during the Civil War, um, in Mississippi, so she was still firmly in slave territory, but yeah. Uh, she would be educated at Rust University in her native Holly Springs, Mississippi, at the age of uh, 14. And Rust University was a freedman's school. Uh, so those who had been freed from slavery, quite literally freed men, it was a school for so uh, she would uh, end up um, moving to Memphis Tennessee in 1884 to and continue teaching then attending Fisk University during several summer sessions um, In 1887, the Tennessee Supreme Court reversed a circuit court decision and ruled against Wells in a suit she had brought against the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad for having been forcibly removed from her seat after she refused to give it up in a colored-only car. Uh, so, yeah. And in 1891, she would write some newspaper articles critical of education that was available to African American children. Uh, her teaching license was not renewed, and she became a journalist talking about lynching and all the issues dealing with it um, you know because she's she was born and raised in Mississippi she lived in Tennessee she you know and it's still the post-war uh, post-civil war era so there this is the era during which the Klan is first going um, so she has to kind of deal with all this um, 
1898 to 1902, she would serve as secretary of the National Afro-American Council. And in 1909, participated in the meeting of the Niagara Movement and the founding of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP. So, yeah. And um, the Niagara Movement is actually an organization of black intellectuals. Um, and it called for full political, civil, and social rights for African Americans. So this was already going on. Um, the period when it was around from 1905 to 1910. So we're talking early 1900s. At this point, there was no uh, Rosa Parks. There was no Mar uh, Martin Luther King Jr. This was before all that. Um, it doesn't mean that there wasn't others fighting for these rights. They were, it's just, it didn't culminate to the crescendo of rights being brought forward. It was really just, you know, even though the end of slavery had been brought about, there was still so many other issues because systems were often, even still to this day, some of them are still rigged. But yeah, especially at that time, systems were rigged against African Americans. It didn't, and in, like, like we've talked about before, it wasn't just in certain southern states and towns, it was also in the north. But yeah, uh, let's see, she uh, would, uh, in 1910, found and become the first president of the Negro Fellowship League, which aided newly arrived migrants from the South up to uh, up into the north, so she helped those who had made the movement northward. Um, and at this point of history, there was a great migration of African Americans moving to the north. Uh, she also founded what may have been the very first black women's suffrage group, uh, Chicago's Alpha Suffrage Club. So she's also working, you know, on uh, voting rights for women, especially African American women. But yeah, she actually would serve as a probation officer of the Chicago Municipal Court from 1913 to 1916. But yeah, one of the early, early uh, pioneers in, Afri uh, the, in the push for African American rights. Ida B. Wells, she would uh, end up being Ida B. Wells Barnett after marrying Ferdinand L. Barnett in 1895. Because remember, she's born in 1862, so she was 33. Yeah. She also reported and 
uh, uh, co-owned and wrote in the Memphis Free Speech and Headlight newspaper. So, yeah. Um, in Chicago, uh, in 2020, she was posthumously honored with a Pulitzer Prize special citation for outstanding and courageous reporting on the horrific and vicious violence against African Americans during the era of lynching. So, yeah, again, that's what this book itself is about. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Another one of the people we have, we can look to as pioneers in pushing for African American rights here in the U.S. And like I said, this, this was in the 1890s. And early 1900s, she was doing all this. So, yeah. Um, but, I think we'll go ahead and end this episode here. I'll be putting the links in the description bo box box below the video as always but yeah Ida B. Wells uh, again it, it's somebody to check out if you ever want to and at some point we may read this particular book uh, it's a short one so but as always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting my sources, as I've already said, in the description box below the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, later.